when people, you know, study people like you, they're always looking for like the the themes, like what's the three things he does that you know, like they're trying to find the like the secrets and whatever else they do that. They, oh, what's his morning routine, whatever else. Um, your creative process. What is from your own observation the most unusual part of it? The uh, part that you go, no one else seems to do it this way, but okay. uh, I I tend to be able to work on. Not, not everyone. And I work with a lot. I'm lucky also because I get to work with a lot of like, literally like the most brilliant people in the world who do what I do. So I have a very front row seat to like an incredibly high level of performance, you know, <laughs> um, on a writing standpoint, acting standpoint, directing standpoint, all these things I'm getting to see like truly the best versions of it, you know. Um, but I think, you know, for me, I I am I am good at switching gears and compartmentalizing. I find some writers maybe would think that is strange, and and the idea of like writing two things, two different things in one day would be strange to some writers. The idea of like, okay, I'm going to write one TV show in the morning and then a movie in the afternoon. I think that, but again, to me, it's very intuitive. Some writers find switching gears creatively, especially midday, difficult. I I can work on five different things throughout the day. And whenever I'm working on whatever thing it is, I'm pretty able to like fully engage on that thing. Um, I, I physically write more than I think most people with do. Pen. No, with uh, on a keyboard, a but keyboard. like I find a lot of writers want to talk about like, uh, to me, I'm like, just write it. Let's just write it. Let's just see how it looks. Let's just try it. Just write it down. Like, and I think a lot of people are precious with writing and a lot of people, you know, it's like a big, they kind of like, they, they try to like, it's very like sanctimonious or something like that, you know? But I, I try to like really just write different versions of things. Share, I share a lot of early versions of things with like a group of people that I trust. I'm sending rough versions of things to people. I'll rewrite it instantly. I'll do a hundred drafts of something, you know, um, I'm really not precious with that, you know, but, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if like, yeah, I don't know what other, I don't know what people expect. I, I, I'm, I'm more curious than other people's creative processes, honestly. Like it's so ingrained in who I am. Like, yeah, I've been doing it since I was so young. Like it, it's, it, it's truly like a part of like my brain chemistry is, and my development was, is built around, you know, writing and, and writing movies specifically. So like my, my personality, I think in some ways is, is, is engineered around writing and, and, and making movies in some ways. Cause I've been doing it since I was so young. So I really think it's like, it's become a very fluid part of who I am. And it doesn't feel like often I'm like sitting down to work. It's like, it's just kind of a fluid part of my day. I do also have like, I'm very, I get a schedule sent to me by my assistant at the end of every night that tells me what I'm doing the next day. I pretty much just do what's on the schedule. <laughs> she, she sends you an email, right? Yeah. And it will say 10 p.m. do this, Seth. Yeah, it'll be like 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. But And there'll be like giant bl free blocks of time in there where I will write usually, or me and my partner will organize our own. We'll, we'll organize our own writing time amidst that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty regimented from a schedule standpoint, which does surprise people because people will encounter me and be like, hey, let's get together like sometime this week. And I'm always like, like I'm like scheduled like, <laughs> like a month out pretty rigorously throughout the days. But if I asked I mean? you what your schedule was next week, would you I have no fucking clue? I don't know. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> my schedule was Monday. <laughs> I'm also, yeah, like I'm not, I'm good at, I, I like dealing what's right in front of me, honestly, as Same. well. Like I, I, I can't begin to process what's happening next week. Like I, I truly, that's too much for me. There's a young creative listening to this now, sat in their bedroom or driving in their car, pushing their pram, or walking their dog, whatever. And they, they're a creative in whatever industry. It could be DJing or, you know, author. They could be an actor. Yeah. What is the actionable advice that you could give to them to, to you know, give them a shot of, because there's a lot of creatives out there that are struggling. Yeah. And you, you would have had this bird's eye view on creators that end up being successful, you know, in their careers and those that maybe have the talent but don't end up getting there. Is there anything actionable that you can say to them that would help them end up in the talented, successful group? Um, unfortunately, the only way to mitigate not being successful is to not quit. That's it. If you don't quit, you might make it. 
And if you quit, you definitely won't. <laughs> and and honestly, I think after all the years I've seen people make it and not make it, the only common denominator is is that. Like, I've seen actors write themselves off, be like, I'm never going to fucking do this. Try to get other jobs. One of my dear friends who's an actor, he's been an actor. He's a great actor, a brilliant actor. And his career ebbs and flows, comes and goes. He'll star in a TV show for a few years. He won't work for two years. He went and tried to get a job at like a car dealership one day. And I was like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, and he's like, I, I, I can't, I've quit acting. No one's going to fucking hire me again. I'm unhirable. Now he's like, like the star of the most successful play on Broadway right now. And like, because he just got this role a couple of years after that. And he's in uh, one of the biggest movies that's coming out next year. He's in it. Like, and, and, and it's because he didn't actually quit. He, he kept going, you know, and it's not, you know, especially Hollywood. It's not a fair industry. It, it is not fair who makes it. it. The best people don't make it, you know, it's very luck oriented. It's very connections oriented. Um, I'm lucky. Like, and I also worked hard and thank God I, you know, have, I'm, I'm a good enough writer that I've been able to have enough longevity in my career once I got lucky. But like a lot of luck played into my success, you know. But that being said, I've seen people get lucky very at random times through random ways. I always think about like Ian McKellen. Like, did you, had you heard of him before he was 65 years old? Like that guy, I didn't like, as I had never fucking heard the words Ian McKellen until he was Magneto in X-Men. Then all of a sudden he's like in Lord of the Rings. He's one of the most famous people on earth. He got famous when he's like 60. Like, like that's what happens to people sometimes. You know what I mean? It, it's like, you never know, you know? And so I think that is, is what's interesting is, and if you like it, then just don't quit. And as long as you have enough to survive, then just keep trying to do it, you know? But there's got to be something that I could do to increase my luck. Be, be really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think making, being nice, honestly, being nice, being the type of person people want to be around, that people like, that people, if it comes down to it, want to help instead of not help, that is very good. Like I've seen that just if people don't like being around you, then, then, then you will fail because you need other people to help you succeed.